Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World. This video is the second in a three part set of videos covering a new article about shark intelligence. Before you continue on, and before you watch the previous video to this one, Shark Intelligence Part 3, go and check out the source article. There are a lot of little details that I will not cover in this video that add more context to the material. I will leave a link to it in the description below. I would also like to give a shout out to Great White Soul on Instagram. This gentleman has just finished writing his book about the story of a great white shark told from the shark's perspective. He is currently looking for individuals who can translate from French to English. I, for one, will be ordering a copy of his book once it's done and giving it a review on this channel once I've read it. Please, do me a solid and go give Great White Soul a follow on Instagram for updates on the book. I think he's also making a model of the famous shark Deep Blue as the recording of this video. Very impressive. With those caveats out of the way, let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's take a look at Shark Intelligence Part 4. So, moving down the list of categories the article covers, Next in line is electrical and magnetic cues. Now, this section needs no introduction. We've known for years that sharks and rays are masters at detecting electrical and magnetic stimuli. They tested sandbar sharks, Dr. David Schiffman's favorite type of shark, and yellow stingrays. Both species had a 100% response rate with magnetic fields ranging from point 03 to 2.89 microteslas above the ambient geomagnetic field. This shouldn't surprise anyone, as we all know that sharks and rays have an entire sense dedicated to detecting this stimuli. Not only do they use it for food, but also navigation. But shark toes, what does this have to do with shark intelligence? Everything. Sharks have seven senses, two more than you talking monkeys, two more senses in a much bigger and more dynamic world than ours. That means their brains have to process all that data constantly coming to them in said dynamic world. Where this falls into electrical and magnetic stimuli in regards to navigation, their brains have to process and know where they are in the world and navigate it to and from their known grounds with little to no landmarks. You humans get lost all the time in an airport or a parking lot or in an airport parking lot. Those are the marks of an intelligent animal. Now, let's take a look at the next section, chemical cues. Again, like the previous category, it should come as no surprise that sharks can make very specific associations in terms of chemical cues. However, one thing they noted in the article that I had considered is how early life experience can impact later behaviors, especially as an embryo. Let me explain. Scientists suggested that embryos exposed to the scent of native predators would generate a response depending on the stage of the egg. In an experiment, they used the embryos of Port Jackson sharks at different stages and exposed them to the smell of fish and the smell of a shark. The baby sharks, no, don't you dare start singing that song, I hate that song, were able to differentiate between two smells and had the appropriate responses. This implies that the nervous system is developed and functional very early in the embryo's stage. Another test they conducted involving Port Jackson sharks were designed for them to associate a burst of bubbles or a light with food. All the sharks learned it in less than 10 days. What's even more remarkable, and something I hinted at a bit earlier, is that the sharks remembered this association 
for up to 40 days. This implies a remarkable long-term memory. And if you ask me, I think sharks can remember things for far longer than that. Remember when I said that sharks navigate throughout the world using magnetic fields? Those sharks have to remember the many places they go to year round. And every year, they always end up at the exact spots they intended, traveling thousands of miles over open water. I would argue that implies a fantastic long-term memory that is vastly underestimated by the public. With these tests, the scientists suggest that sharks can quickly make associations with a wide range of cues, albeit natural or artificial. Now finally, let's move on to social cognition. For this topic, I've actually done my own video on how social sharks are. They appear to like each other far more than humans like other humans. In particular, the sand tiger shark. It was established earlier during these tests in the article that adult Port Jackson sharks preferred hanging around particular individuals. Basically, they were the shark equivalent of friends. And I want to make that distinction because the human version of friend is different from the animal version of friend. Yes, I know humans are animals, but you get the point. What's interesting here, though, is that apparently, juvenile Port Jackson sharks were a bit more solitary. Now, why this is important is that this was not the case with other shark species, like cat sharks and lemon sharks. This makes me wonder what factors and conditions make a species of shark value familiarity. They did note that it was clear that juvenile Port Jackson sharks were capable of learning by watching and interacting with one another. I suppose this can somewhat answer the question I raised in my Great White Shark vs. Humpback Whale video. To make a very long story short, a Great White Shark was hunting a weakened humpback whale using the method of bite and release so the whale could bleed out. Then, a bigger Great White showed up, scaring the other shark off, and started attacking the whale in a very similar method. This test here could imply that the shark may have watched the first one and copied the method. Now, it's also entirely possible that the great whites do this more than we see in our cameras and simply have plenty of practice. Just food for thought. Back to the topic at hand. One test they conducted involved two groups of juvenile lemon sharks. One group would be trained to perform a particular task for a food reward. Then, some of those sharks will be swapped out for naive sharks, or in other words, sharks that didn't know how to do the task yet. The naive sharks then either watched the sharks that knew how to perform the task, or were taught by the sharks themselves. The naive sharks quickly no longer became naive, as they learned the task quicker than the first group. This makes it clear that sharks have some level of capacity to share information or gather information by watching others. The scientists also studied shark social networks. Once again, we rely on our friends, the Port Jackson sharks, as it was very clear with these studies that they chose who they spent their time with consistently over the years and it was usually the same individuals. This was usually based on size or sex, but not relatedness. The same can be said for reef sharks. The scientists noted that shark social networks were highly structured and not random, as most of the public believes. I covered data very similar to this in my sand tiger shark video, as it's noted in this article that Port Jackson sharks have a social structure during their migrations as well. This even goes as far as shark social networks resulting in them learning to avoid capture and recapture from hooks. Though, to be fair, this is quite common amongst fish. However, what's not common is sharks being associated with complex social systems. That is usually associated with primates and other higher order mammals. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Sharks and rays 
are higher order fish, and they are comparable to mammals. Sharks are social animals. They do prefer spending time with specific individuals, and there is a structure to it. Here's a little homework for you that I've noticed in a number of videos over time. Next time you see a video or a clip involving great hammerhead sharks and tiger sharks, keep an eye out for tiger and hammerhead shark friendships. You might be surprised what you find. But this is where we're going to end things for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me know your thoughts and comments below. And for the love of all that is Elasmo, go and read the full article. I promise it is worth your time. Speaking of time, thank you for giving me some of yours, and I will see you in the next video. Until then.